I have been shipwrecked on Svartalfheim, and I shall be surviving the next 100 days over here. It is home to many deadly creatures, like the skeleton T-Rex and the infernal dragon. And if that wasn't enough, there are literal Vikings ready to loot and slaughter anything they find. It is my objective to tame all of the powerful creatures found on this map and fight off any Viking attacks that come our way. Spawning in for the first time on our new adventure, I was mesmerized by the landscape, which got me extremely excited for our new journey. After making sure we spawned in a safe location, oh boy was I wrong, I began uprooting bushes for fiber. Like any other start in arc, this was followed by punching a tree very aggressively, granting me with hard and sturdy wood, which was then handcrafted into a stone pickaxe. I immediately began putting this pickaxe to good work, slowly chipping away at this large rock. Flint collected, hatchet crafted. I also made sure to craft a torch so I can start terrorizing the nearby wildlife. That's exactly what I did, cooking every dodo in sight. Apparently, Dodos fight back now, but of course, they stood no chance against your boy Drizzle. Boom. I decided to not kill the babies, as I wanted to be nice for once. Psych! I gathered up a bit more necessities and instigated a fight with a couple of parasaurs. They nearly bit me to pieces, but we all know that I clutched up. Oh look, a baby parasaur. We all know what happened. After, I spotted a level 140 parasaur that I wanted to tame. It didn't work out at all. Since a slingshot ain't good enough, I crafted up the finest of narcotics. Whilst they were being crafted, I did what any other smart survivor would do, crafting cooking pots to level up. On this map, you see, there are no explorer notes, so getting experience is going to be a tedious challenge. Our cooking pot crafting lasted until day two, when I finally managed to knock out our soon-to-be friend. Yes. Finally. My belly was rumbling, so I cooked up succulent meat, as uh, I just love meat. Right after hydrating myself, I was looking around to ensure no danger was in sight, and uh, there it was. One of the most powerful creatures on this map, blasting everything to pieces. This parasaur better tame up quick. I wanted a closer look at this thing, as remember, one of our objectives is to take down one of these beasts. I soon got petrified and bolted back to my parasaur, begging it to tame up, as the skeleton T-Rex is getting closer by the second. Lil bro listened to me and was now our forever slave. I immediately saddled this thing up and soon came to the realization that I'm gonna have to go in the direction of the menacing T-Rex, as that's the only way out of this beach. Luckily for us though, the T-Rex was busy cooking a giant turtle. I am never returning to this beach. I soon spotted a yellow supply crate. Excitement got the best of me as we sprinted towards it to see what loot can be plundered, only to realize that I'm not a high enough level to open it yet. Oh. Oh. oh well, continue on our adventure we must. Before that though, I decided to open this epic game and absolutely murk some monsters. You see, when I'm not busy surviving an arc, I'm commanding over 800 unique champions in this thrilling RPG, which by the way is totally free to play and already has over 80 million downloads, so why aren't you playing it? With Raid Shadow Legends, you can chill and play casually or get competitive and battle it out to be the best. The graphics are so sharp, it's like having a console in your pocket. And speaking of pockets, mine's full of champions. Did I mention that there are billions of ways to customize them? My two favorite champions are Whirlum Frost King and Pixniel. Whirlum is a Void Legendary champion, great for protecting your team and boosting their defense with his aura skill granting everyone a 40% increase to their defense. And Pixniel, my absolute favorite champion, not only because she resembles your mom, but she also brings a blizzard of buffs and debuffs to freeze your enemies in their tracks. So if you're done taming dinosaurs for the day, Oh, why not try taming some epic bosses in raid? With new updates and champions every month, it's an endless adventure. Speaking about updates, you absolutely cannot miss the Cursed City update. This feature is a grand spectacle with an outstanding 100 stages. On your journey, you'll face daunting battles against not just one, but two bosses simultaneously. As you continue completing these stages, you may even have the opportunity to earn a mythical champion. There's also the Christmas Story event, where you'll join Sir Nicholas on a festive adventure, solving minigames, and you can even win in-game and real-life prizes like epic champions and Amazon gift cards. All you need to do to join the event is head to raidxmas.com. Download Raid Shadow Legends today by clicking my link in the description or scanning my QR code to get insane bonuses available only through my link. We are talking about an epic champion Drake and useful in-game items like energy refills and XP boosters. Once you're in, come find me under the name Drizzle6969 and join my clan Drizzle's Dragons. And I'll be seeing you on the battlefield, boys. Thank you Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video and back on with our adventure. I 
I wish to start adventuring more inland to find a good base as the beach just isn't going to cut it. We quickly caught sight of a towering structure, its silhouette hinting at a prehistoric origin. Could this be the handiwork of ancient Vikings? Only moments after, we came across Viking monuments in the vicinity. It was like a nod of confirmation to my earlier hunch. The presence of these ancient relics added an exciting layer of history to our adventure. Unlike this angry tickle chicken which wanted to tear us to bits, I was left with no choice but to take a daring leap of faith off the waterfall. It was a heart-stopping moment, but thankfully both my trusty pyrosaur companion and I survived the ordeal, ready to face another day in this wild, untamed world. Our journey continued, marching tirelessly for hours, pausing only briefly to deal with a swarm of pesky insects granting us chitin. Not too far off from the bug massacre, I stumbled across a great contender for our future base location, a flat terrain with a nearby pond, perfect for future cultivation. A scorpion didn't like this idea and attempted to evict me of the property. He would certainly live to regret his decisions. This area even had a ruin accessible by a bridge, which would give the opportunity for some epic builds. Yet a glaring problem presented itself, the complete absence of metal or other rare resources. So I decided to pass up on making this place our new home. Our expedition eventually brought us to the volcanic region, where to my excitement, I spotted crystal. I hopped off our friend and parkoured towards it. We could finally craft a spy glass. As I was leaving the lava strewn area, I came across an iguanodon which I swiftly knocked out. Once it became ours, I realized that I wasn't a high enough level to craft its saddle. I'm not very smart. Back on our feet, raptors soon thought that we were their lunch. This encounter came way too close for comfort and ended by taming and naming one of these fierce creatures, Rappi, a formidable new ally. I finally found a supply crate we could actually loot. We decided to abandon our other dinosaur friends as they were simply slowing us down. As evening fell, we raced through the forest on Rappi's back, at last coming across a mountain which had an abundance of these gold rocks which gave us plenty of metal and gold. While the purpose of the gold remains uncertain, the abundance of metal was a valuable find. Seeing how resource rich this area was, I decided to set up camp. A forge and pestle were placed, soon followed by a smithy. Whilst waiting for the metal to cook, I farmed and farmed and farmed. Now having metal tools, I wanted to wander around the area for a while to see what our neighbors had to say about us being here. I made sure to kill anything we could for a hide as I wanted to craft a ton of forges. Heading back to base, we stumbled across a blue drop granting us with a fireplace to keep us warm. The neighborhood seemed peaceful till the raptor gang jumped us. I tried my best to fend them off but soon got slaughtered. Bro, what? I spawned right back, instantly met with another raptor exactly near our bed. I dashed towards our friend, seeing him getting eaten alive. The Argods must love our raptor friend as he lived. The kite we collected previously soon was utilized to forge some forges. <laughs> See what I did there? Seeing how dangerous this neighborhood was, I began chopping down logs of wood to start construction on a wooden spike fence to keep us safe. The whole day was spent working on this, taking a quick breather to admire how incredible the landscape looked. Our fourth day began by placing a bit more of our wall down and opening a yellow supply crate. Is what I wish happened, but I'm still too low of a level. There was at least a blue supply crate right beside us, which gave us a pteranodon saddle. This was really useful considering there are no flyers on this map yet. Let me explain. A long time ago, all of Svartalfheim was infested with dragons, but for some odd reason, they all vanished many years ago. But the three artifacts found deep inside the caves of this map are capable of summoning the dragon portal, which will bring back all of the dragons there once was. And of course, I will be trying to do this later in the video. But anyways, I'm still very far away from getting hold of the dragon summoner. So let's continue with our adventure. I missed our parasaur friend, so I began taming a new one. A mummy moss chops was soon slaughtered, allowing me to claim her young. <laughs> Not gonna lie, boys, this is the first first and last time I saw this thing. I genuinely have no idea what happened to it. After this ordeal, our new parasaur friend was all ours. Our wooden fence was complete, making our base safe enough for me to wander off and adventure. Rappi and myself embarked on a journey, soon distracted by bugs that I used for target practice. We ventured all the way down to our mountain and crossed a really cool looking bridge. I saw a very abnormal looking creature in the distance. What is that? I have never seen one of these before and I wanted to tame it. A quick search online and I soon discovered that these take a ton of tranquilizer arrows to knock out. Luckily for us though, a blue triceratops wanted to be tamed. Yes, nice. 
This baby looked too cute to kill, so I didn't kill it. Once tamed up, I used it to farm more berries than your fat ass will ever eat, and crafted up 25 times and 50 times narcotics to make tranquilizer arrows, which are 25 times and 50 times stronger than the normal ones. Who would have guessed? The Moro Raptor stood no chance. Target spotted. Bravo 6, going dark. Oh! Oh no, oh my... After seeing how quickly that thing killed us, I decided to craft even stronger narcotics to hopefully knock it out before it put our lights out. I ran back to the crime scene on the lookout for our loot bag. A true don soon got the best of me. I hate this game. Back in we went, this time collecting our gear with ease. I was certain that our stronger trank arrows will easily knock this thing out. I hit it again. Oh. Oh. Well, you know me, boys. I ain't given up. I spawned back in, collected my kit, and found a Terezina violating our dinosaurs. Our raptor perished, but in the end, Drizzle clutched up. I crafted up more tranquilizer arrows and finally put this beast to sleep. Please tell me it's out. Yes! <sighs> a dumb carno decided to kill itself in my spike trap, giving us prime meat, which was fed to our new friend. <laughs> this thing looks so sick. The rest of our evening was spent falling in love with this raptor. It had it all. The speed, an incredible bite, an agile jump, and a massive peen. We returned home on day 6, looting a yellow drop. And just to mess with your brain, I won't show you what it had. Our morning was a picking up simulator, as I've decided the moose base location once again. Having tamed such a quick creature will allow us to easily explore the rest of the map. We traveled for miles and miles on end, soon figuring out that we never named our Moro Raptor, so I called her Sally. Sally and I got jumped by a pack of Allosauruses, leaving us with no option but to yeet off a cliff, soon realizing that I had no parachutes. Trick question, how much damage shall we take from this fall? You're wrong, we took flippin' nothing. Sally is a beast. I wanted to really test her might, so on we went to fight a Spino. Whoever decided to add Micro Raptors to Ark, I hope you step on Lego. Get me on, get me on, get me on. After that gruesome battle, I found not one, but two skeleton T-Rexes. This made me crap my pants three times. Ooh. This door looks like it hasn't been open in decades. I wonder what lies behind this mystery. By now, I had traveled far north and would be happy to settle down anywhere in the vicinity. I discovered that this area also had a metal mountain nearby, which yes, I did get carried away with photo mode. A lake with beaver dams and a bridge. This place had it all. I'm building here. To make things even better, this gate fit perfectly. I'm already in love with this place. Oh, that's perfect, boys. Setting up camp took up the rest of the day, and just like any other place we live, I had to tame up a parasaur. I then began railing this fat beaver with trank arrows, putting it to sleep in no time. Day 7 began by making a fence around our new home and robbing the face from the nearby beavers. Gold and obsidian were harvested right after. Back at base, I found a unicorn attacking our spikes. I put it to sleep and now had two of the cutest baby unicorns ever seen. These things were so majestic, it would be a shame if they died. Our fat beaver was all tamed up and ready for hours of hard labor. A paracer thought we weren't gangster enough to be in this part of the hood so began evicting us. Jokes on him though, as my dinosaurs are trained veterans. A Terezina then went ballistic, putting an end to our parasaur's short and miserable life. One of our unicorns also got eaten by a piranha. Oh well, so long for them having a long life. I really didn't want another massacre to take place, so as the sun rose on day 8, I finished off our fence. This fence didn't do shit, as a crazy Ohio citizen jumped over it and whiplashed half of our belongings. After sorting our stuff out, I realized how desperately we needed oil to keep advancing and crafting gangster items like a fabricator and cryopods. The massive beaver then spawned again, which I of course looted. Give me all the space. Sally and I sprinted across the map for hours and hours on end, finding zero oil whatsoever. Frustrated, I decided to fight a skeleton T-Rex, soon getting humbled. Oh my god, oh my god, it decimated that thing. Get me out of here. It finally clicked. I should probably look for oil in the water. And boom, there it was. Yes. I also spotted a pearl clam larger than your mom. I picked up all of them, just like I picked up all of your moms in real life. <laughs> Get wrecked, nerds. On the way back to our abode, I spotted a yellow beam with a ringed drop slowly descending. I decided to wait for it, proving to be the right choice as we were gifted with a metal shield. Arriving back home, just as day 9 began, I crossed crafted an Archomatic Fabricator in the Archomatic Workbench, which is a normal fabricator, except it doesn't make that loud noise that goes something like 
Yeah, I have no idea why wildcard didn't remove that, but oh well, it's wildcard. It's also much smaller than your pin. And boom, we also crafted cryopods. Oh boys, the polar dragon must be trembling at our progress. I climbed up the mountain again, soon spotting a level 95. It wasn't a very high level, but it agreed to work for below minimum wage, so I tamed it anyways and named her Spike. The rest of day 9 was spent preparing for the day of taming we shall have tomorrow by farming berries and turning them into the strongest of narcotics. Our taming adventure started splendidly on day 10, I won 45 though the curious. Knocking it out was a simple task, but arc is arc, and of course there had to be two literal skeleton T-Rexes right beside us. I tried leading them away from the Dodecurus and nearly got fried alive. Oh, uh, 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 no, no, no. Oh. I have no idea how I shall be killing one of these later on. When I say this map is the coolest looking arc map in existence, I mean it. Just look at this viking home. Bro must have spent years building this bridge. As the sun started shining, I made the best discovery yet. Crops that grow in the wild. Young Drizzy was hype. What can I say? I just love me some long and hard carrots. Our taming expedition was a complete failure until I spotted the best tickle chicken this map has ever seen. I started tranking it out. Oh, I ran out of trank arrows. We traveled and traveled stopping by a bed of white flowers as they gave millions of narco berries which of course turned into loads of very potent tranquilizer arrows our taming spree wasn't a complete fail thanks to this dodo curious we stumbled across the red beam of a supply crate soon led me to a 130 tyrakalia you already know we had to tame this thing damn electronics and rockets i'll take it any day of the week i started the morning of day 11 by screeching at a nearby turtle it got pissed and began coming at us obviously not ending well for it Finally, the large feline was ours. I have no idea how Sally never gets tired from running this much. We discovered a sort of viking temple, if you could even call it that. It felt really weird around here, almost like I could feel the presence of a viking. Only a few meters away, I got a glimpse of a saddled mammoth. I don't remember taming one myself. Upon further investigation, we spotted an actual viking. I made sure to be extremely sneaky, not making any sudden movements. Fueled by curiosity, I inched closer and closer towards his base with every chance I got. He probably hasn't seen anyone around in years, as he left his door open when taking his mammoth out for a stroll. I took advantage of this and looted all the valuables in his viking hut, getting out of there as quick as I could. I'm out. I'm out. The last thing I'd want right now is to come face to face with a viking. On our way back home, I arrowed down a large chicken right off Sally's back. Oh, we sent it flying, mate. It became ours on day 12, and I bounced off into the sunrise on our beloved Sally. I've honestly really come to love her. Dude, how, bro? Oh, what is that, man? The salt in my veins after that one was off the charts. As if that wasn't enough, I was mourning our loss peacefully in my base when the berserker raptor had the audacity to break my fence and start munching down my other friends. I had enough and ordered everyone to murder this villain. At last, justice was served. Tickle Chicken was put back into action as we had a fence to repair. I used my massive brain here and loaded up all of the hard wood we were collecting into our beaver as it has the ability to reduce the weight on these logs of wood. With the fence repaired, I pounced back out on our big cat and boxed the Alpha Carno. I was a bit scared that the Viking might go looking for where his flak armor went, so the next day I began using my doe, the Curious, to farm all of the small river rocks near our home. Bro farmed like his life depended on it, which it did. All of my dinosaurs were terrible at farming thatch, so I had to take this into my own hands and use my massive biceps to turn down all the trees in sight. All these resources were hand crafted into structures which I shall transform into the best base you've ever seen. Initially I placed a 3x3 foundation but soon realized that this will be way too small to house my massive peen. I picked it up and placed down a larger foundation this time, much better. Walls were then constructed followed by sloped roofs to protect us from the rain and the possible snowfall. I finished it off with a dinosaur gate and patched any remaining holes ensuring no viking could sneak into my base. Oh that's sick bro. The rest of the evening was spent placing down our inside furniture. Yeah. Ah, damn, this looks sick. I realized that I never named our loyal Tylacalia and named it Big Cat. 14 took us to the Redwoods. And if you know me, I hate the Redwoods. Oh, no. 
I didn't find anything of interest here, so I decided to rob the beaver's hard work once again. Starting to grow an army of T-Rexes was my next plan of action, so Big Cat and myself pounced around till a 140 Rex was spotted. Waiting for it to tame, I wanted to feel what it's like to fly, and parachuted off the mountain to a yellow drop. And yes, I did just jump off a cliff for nothing. At least, there was a cool abandoned viking village nearby. This is dope, dude. As we climbed up the mountain, the Rex finished munching on my meat. What do you mean by that? Let's go. Climbing down, I spotted a blight blue Rex, which was tranked out and left to tame on its own. The glare of a red supply crate soon drew me back into the redwoods, rewarding us with useful resources and saddles for future dinosaurs. My big cat was getting lonely, so I got it a friend. We were going to need a larger area to store all of our new friends, so expanding our spike wall was a must. I went back into the redwoods to check on our taming cat when I spotted an ever more beautiful sighting. Amazing! Once tamed, I rushed back home and couldn't wait to get settled up. Moving around the map shall become a lot more enjoyable. Seeing that my T-Rex hadn't tamed yet, I went to investigate, discovering it ran out of food. I went to get some more using spike walls and our tamed Rex to kill dinosaurs nearby. Blue Rex was finally tamed. Whistled away from danger, I cryoed it up and flew home happily ever after. Is what I wish happened, but my game crashed. And upon loading back in, I was getting eaten alive. This game is the definition of horse and I died, oh my god. The walk of shame back was made to collect our kit, and all I could think about was the Maywing we just lost. Oh boy, was I pissed. Little did I know that as I went back into the biome with large tree trunks, I would find an even better replacement for our previous Maywing, 145 Maywing. The only thing that's more sexy than this is Drizzle's subscribers. If you're not subscribed, you'll end up like our previous Maywing. Flying Platypus decided to tame as day 16 came around. Today was very special as we discovered a new species. Never seen a parrot like this one before. It even called me a fat bastard as I knocked it out. Not much else happened for the rest of the day except exploring more of the map, crafting bullets for our machine gun and farming a ton of metal. The following day started off in spectacular fashion, adding a 145 chicken to our kill squad. A few hours later, a red drop was looted which gave us a Mastercraft Spanosaur saddle. We need to tame one now. Back at base, I was minding my own business when a crazy Florida man broke through the fence. Our army was strong enough to take this one down. What we are not ready for, however, is a viking attack. Thus, after placing down a feeding trough for my fat dinosaurs to eat from and placing a tap for fresh spring water right beside our base, I went out taming once again. Another high-level chicken. Boys were on a roll. Seeing that I wanted to keep taming dinosaurs left, right and center, more narcos were needed. The white flower beds coupled with my maywing stomping ability soon granted us more narco berries than we will ever need. As dawn broke, I dove headfirst into a new berserk discovery, a berserk T-Rex, boasting 46,000 HP and tearing through a diplodocus like butter. We will keep this thing in mind for later. I decided to wander around the swampy area a little bit more, soon stumbling on a rotten corpse of a stego. Curiosity paid off as we found out that these things actually give a lot of polymer. A large white tree soon caught my attention, which I called the tree of life. Not too far off from the tree of life resides maywings. They soon became scared of my presence, bolting off in different directions. I only managed to tame one of them, which isn't too bad after all. Silly me thought I saw another Mororaptor, except this thing was only a rip-off version of our dead Sally. I tranked it out and went to feed it my meat. It even had the audacity to reject my meat. Thinking of how the Postosuchus could possibly be tamed, a way more interesting creature presented itself. What is that? I present a crossbreed between Santa's reindeer and an overgrown lizard. I don't think it will be getting any Christmas presents this year. Just look at how aggressive it's being. Of course, I wanted it to be my own, so I started shooting super strong tranquilizer arrows into this thing. It had a ton of torpor. Once knocked, this coward Postosuchus kept biting at it, so I gunned it down, finishing it off with our Tylacalia. Once this behemoth was up and smiling, I named it Rudolph, soon discovering we needed to be level 90 for its saddle. I flew back home and began crafting. Okay, Occasionally taking a break to talk to our parrot. No. What the hell? Who am I named Penny? We could really use a chemistry bench, but we're nowhere close to the required level for it. Our day ended by finding trees with weird purple markings in a part of the map we never huh? explored before. Right besides them was an abandoned temple of some sort, which spooked me out, so I left. Day 19. I headed back to the bridge swamp area in search of the berserk T-Rex. I wanted to try kill it in order to get enough experience to craft a chemistry bench and possibly a saddle for Rudolph. For a lack of better words, I got arced. Oh no 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 ah! no 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 dude run 
How do you keep getting stuck? No! Dude, you keep getting stuck in everything. Hey, at least Big Cat was still alive. After nearly smashing in my monitor, I climbed up to a ledge to catch my breath and healed Big Cat for several hours. Finally, there it was, the Berserk T-Rex. Time to test if Big Cat does bleed damage and oh my god, it does. Let's go! With Big Cat back at half HP and bleed damage tearing this beast apart, it was only a matter of time till we killed it. No! No! Brute! I really really hate this game. Spawning back in, I used one of our remaining Maywings to retrieve our kit. The Berserk T-Rex might be feeling like the king right now, but this will change very soon. Sifting through my items, I realized that we had a great Tylocolio saddle blueprint. I crafted it up, and as the sun set in, I found a 135 Big Cat along with two others. I put them to sleep in Drizzle style. I'm Drizzle, and Drizzle's a Chad! Boom! The Berserk T-Rex was in trouble. Once they tamed, I put our good saddle on the highest level one. I soon got sidetracked from our Berserk T-Rex assassination mission by taming an Archaeopteryx. These things are by far the coolest creature in Ark. Look at this! Imagine you see this thing running towards you. Anyways, back on track we must go. I spotted a Berserk Raptor nearby base, so I killed it to level up Big Cat for the battle ahead. Day 21. The big day has arrived. It's time to put Big Kitty to the test. The overgrown flying platypus got us right next to the Berserk t-rex in seconds this time we were being smart about things and placed down a bed in case we die which will not happen of course because i'm drizzle and drizzle never dies we even cryoed up our maywing to ensure it won't get munched on by another dinosaur while we are facing this beast i parachuted down instantly gunning down the caprosuchus for obvious reasons it's go time and yes that is a berserk raptor right near this berserk t-rex i kept pouncing around while slowly nipping at the t-rex allowing the bleed damage to do its magic i thought i got stuck for a moment so i jumped onto a wall to get our bearings. Back in we went. The T-Rex's health was disintegrating. I had to make sure to not kill it while still riding our big cat as I wanted all of the experience to be rewarded to my character. Once it was on the verge of dying, I hopped right off and blasted it into the afterlife. That thing gave us 9 levels, which takes us up to level 82. The exact level needed to craft a chemistry bench. Yes! Let's go boys! And yes, I forgot I had an entire Maywing in a cryopod and travelled all the way back home on our cat. Not my brightest moment. Now at base, I obviously wanted to craft a chemistry bench, but still needed a lot of stuff for it. I also realized that I never placed this weird futuristic box I robbed from the Viking and still had no idea what it was capable of doing, but we will find that out later in the video. Anyways, I remember that I had extra hatch, so I used the little electronics I was able to make and crafted an air conditioner, placing it right outside. I can't wait to have my imprinted Maywings. Seeing that I'd like to have a chemistry bench sooner than later, I promised my Ankylosaurus $10 if he farmed metal all day, which he did. Bro didn't stop farming until the sun set in. Oh, and for anyone wondering, I never gave him those $10. Why are you bullying me? Day 22 started in a very exciting fashion, farming wood. I need all the wood I could possibly get my hands on in order to cook all the metal we farmed yesterday. After our tickle chicken got tired of farming, Spike was once again put to hard work. This time, not only farming metal, but also obsidian, which I could then use to craft polymer. And yes, if you think Spike is being overworked, rest assured, he definitely is. No! Oh my... We also needed lots of pearls to craft a chemistry bench, so I'm going to have to do something I despise doing. Going into the ocean. Scuba was made and off we go. I tried looking in a nearby pond for pearls to avoid all the crazy ocean dinosaurs, but there weren't any. What there was though, was a berserk chicken, which I'm sure would taste incredible with some barbecue sauce. The only problem was, if I tried eating it, I'll probably get sliced up into a million pieces. I still don't want to head into the ocean, so I kept looking for large ponds and came across an otter holding an egg. Arc is weird. After no success, I decided to grow up and face my fears, already spotting two large two so teases. Two so teases. Two so Oh my god. Two so teetises. I hate the ocean. Once I'm already here, I figured that I may as well tame an anglerfish, as these things are absolute beasts at farming pearls. One arrow later, and it was knocked out. Whilst waiting for it to tame, I spotted a red deep sea underwater crate, which was sure to have incredible loot. 
a few me a sudden. A few seconds after feeding my anglerfish, I nearly got zapped alive. So once it tamed, I took it to a pond with pearls, which I remembered about, and farmed hundreds of these things. The onset of day 23 blessed us with finding another one of Santa's reindeers, which I knocked out along with two maywings, which were chilling nearby. Once they were all tamed, I realized that I didn't have enough cryopods to bring everyone back home, so the low-level maywing will just need to stay here for the rest of his life. Before we abandon him though, I made sure to made these things up to get fertilized eggs. I'm smart guys. On our way home, I spotted a cave, which I entered and left soon after, as I don't want to die with everything I have on me. Very close to home, I fell into another pond with lots of pearls, which I of course had to farm up, as more, the merrier. Back home, electronics were crafted, meaning I finally had everything to craft a chemistry bench. Oh my god, Borsh, look how quick it crafts stuff. A chemistry bench is great and all, but you know what's even better? An industrial forge. You see, my current forge setup is extremely slow at cooking metal, so I want that fixed. Any guesses on what this shall entail? A lot of farming. Spike probably really regrets being tamed by me. I was about to start our farming montage, but got distracted by this high-level kangaroo. And yes, she will be overworked for minimum wage, just like Spike. We then started collecting obsidian until we were rudely interrupted. No, no, no. It's day 24 and I'm still dying to raptors. Just imagine what will happen if we get attacked by vikings. As I respawned, I remember that the chemistry bench is also great at crafting narcotics. So I queued some up and went back to the mountain for my items. When I arrived, there were two skeleton rexes wandering a bit too close to my knocked out procoptodon, so I had to calmly lead them away. Tame, bro. To make sure my future friend doesn't get fried. No, no, no. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. It finally tamed up, and I instantly whistled it down the cliff once again, getting attacked by raptors. It was a close call, but this time I came out victorious. The rest of the day was pretty uneventful, as all I did was farm more obsidian and place more forges to cook the metal that little bit quicker. Day 25 was crazy. I'm lying. All that was done on day 25 was farm more metal and craft an industrial grill so I can cook anything or anyone I kill. And if you are not subscribed, it could be you. Yes, this is a legitimate threat. But day 26 was actually actually special. I wanted to start working on an actual wall around our entire base, not the current weak wooden spike fence we got that even the crazy Ohio citizens are jumping over. I wanted to build something that could actually give us a chance to defend against the vikings because I have a really bad feeling we shall be getting attacked soon. Though the curious was used to gather thousands of stone which were made into stone foundations. After getting the perfect positioning for my gate in front of the bridge, I placed foundations all around our base. The rest of day 26 and the entirety of 27 were spent farming and placing down foundations, a behemoth gate and a lot of walls and ceilings. The whole thing went pretty smoothly except for the occasion violation by the nearby wildlife. Oh! What? I was now sick of building and farming, so with the first part of our wall built, I felt it was time to explore the map a bit more and possibly tame more cool dinosaurs. Before I headed out though, I spotted a stranger near my house and gunned it down because this is America. After sending the iguanodon to the gulag, I went zooming away on our oversized platypus, soon discovering a large cave. Inside we go. I made sure to take things a bit slow at first, making sure there was nothing deadly in the cave. This place was about as exciting as watching paint dry. Right. Just another ancient viking temple lounging in the wilderness like it owned the place. I wriggled through a corridor so tight I could have sworn it was shrinking. I was half expecting to stumble upon a viking's lost treasure trove or at the very least some dusty old helmets but no, it was just another entrance. Our day did get a lot better when a castle caught my attention. At first I thought it belonged to a royal viking of some sort but upon further investigation this wasn't the case. This premier establishment was abandoned and up for the grabs so I put it up on the real estate market market, so maybe I could make a couple of thousand dollars and escape the matrix. Cool buildings seemed to be spawning out of thin air today as I came across another abandoned castle which looked incredible. And I know I'm saying how cool stuff looks a lot, but the creator of this map really outdid himself here. Lurking in this castle village was a never seen dinosaur, an Alpha Galvarex. I don't know about you, but I think I was way too calm near this thing considering it had more hit points than your mom. I even shot a tranquilizer arrow at it, maybe I could tame it up. Okay, it's quick, it's quick. It's quick, it's quick. Run, 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 run. But it took literally zero torpor from the strongest tranquilizer arrow I could craft. New dinosaur discoveries didn't stop there. As not long after, we spotted a ripoff version of a mammoth. Oh my god, they're so sick. I have no idea why I call them a ripoff version because one of these things has 14,000 hit points and a massive dip. Anyways, I really wanted to tame one of these, but after a quick search online, I realized that there is no way we are taming one yet. As it turns out, these things are alcoholics and can only be tamed 
tamed with beer. I really didn't want to head back to base without taming a new dinosaur, so I kept looking. My efforts soon paid off as I found the Triceratops' cousin. What is that? I want to tame that as well. Oh my god, bro. Why do you exist? After making sure that Microraptor paid for his actions, I put that cool looking track to sleep. I honestly can't wait to use this thing. No! Oh my. Let's just say I was devastated and went crying home as I want to avenge our fallen friend. This would also complete one of our goals for this playthrough, which is to defeat a skeleton T Rex. I spotted one and instantly locked onto it with Tigger, pelting it with lead, whilst our Tyla's bleed damage crushed its insides and before he knew it we conquered one of our many fears on this map we also collected its teeth which shall become in super handy later on now you might be thinking wow drizzle you killed a skeleton t-rex you are the best arc player that has ever lived yes i am but you know what would be even better taming one so i flew back over where we had seen a ton of these things earlier and spotted a 145 that i really wanted to make mine i hopped off my maywing and shot it with a tranquilizer arrow which did absolutely nothing very confused i decided to to chill on a rock and watch a tutorial on how to tame those things. I kid you not. Only two seconds in and a stupid capro already had me by its jaws. I killed it. It looks like the art gods are trolling me today as I'm stuck. Oh my god, bro, what is this game? <laughs> After my step bro helped me get unstuck, I discovered that you can't knock the skeleton T-Rex out with tranquilizer arrows. Instead, you need to use their own teeth to craft an arrow strong enough to pierce through its bony plating. Luckily for us, we already collected nine of these things. Oh my- whoa! What is that? Neo Turtle. What are all these new dinosaurs, dude? I still wanted more teeth though, as I doubt 9 will cut it. So I started day 29 with violence. My Tyla's bleed damage and my incredible aim proved to be a great combo in sending these calcium demons to the afterlife. After a few scares of our cat being cooked alive. No, 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 no! No! Oh my god. We had accumulated 32 bone teeth. Oh, by now we had enough metal smelted to finally craft the industrial forge, so that's exactly what I did. I picked up these slow cooking beta forges and boom! After that major breakthrough in technology, I crafted all the T-Rex teeth arrows we could craft and compound bow because we can only shoot these things from a compound bow. We then headed back to the T-Rex infested land, setting our eyes on a very high level. A few arrows in, I realized that we had nowhere near enough arrows to knock this thing out. To make matters worse, a crazy Ohio citizen grabbed me by the teeth. Oh, no, 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 no! I just managed to escape to then get abducted once again, this time by a crazy Florida man. And yes, I survived that ordeal as well. Since we had nowhere near enough bone arrows for a 145 T-Rex, I decided to go for a really low level one. It didn't work out as we ran out of trank arrows. Ah! Anyways, I spent the rest of my evening killing Rexes for their teeth, and oh my god, I got stunned by a Microraptor again. I really, really, really hate Microraptors. The T-Rex killing led into day 30, where I soon got fed up with absolutely murking these things. So I went to peacefully farm narco berries, but this is Ark, and peace does not exist. Once at the farming spot, I was being chased by one of those crazy Ohio citizens. I managed to climb to a safe spot, but soon remembered that I am Drizzle, and Drizzle is scared of nobody, so I hopped back down and face this thing head on and it would be only a matter of time till it was dead no 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 yeah well done well done drizzle upon arriving back to the crime scene i found tigger alive and well as he just clutched up and killed that monster on his own now that i think about it you know what tigger rhymes with boys it rhymes with bigger the rest of day 30 was pretty uneventful as i just farmed hundreds and hundreds of narco berries with our kangaroo get him boys get him boys no my maiming died i have an idea i have an idea i can hit him off the ledge Yes! Good. Yes! Get wrecked! However, we did end the day by taming a stigma lock, which will go on to live a very happy life. No! My stigma lock died! I did manage to get the next best thing though, its adopted child. We were heading home as the night was setting in, but got distracted by an old friend. I honestly completely forgot we tamed this thing. Day 31 began by spotting a new species of Maywing, the S Maywing. It looked sick, so I had to tame it. I soon found out that these things take literal kibble to tame. Yeah, I'm not taming that thing. In need of some excitement, I decided to spruce up our home by adding a trophy wall mount and proudly displaying the alpha t-rex skull we had acquired a few days back more advanced rifle bullets were fabricated in the fabricator <laughs> i'm too funny as we set out for the day's adventure lady luck seemed to be smiling down on us a better compound bow than our current one appeared in a red drop nearby along with a riot shield it was almost too good to be true and as if that wasn't enough a yellow ring drop sat just beside it though its contents were nothing special my initial plan was to continue hunting down skeleton t-rexes for their valuable teeth. But shooting them with advanced rifle bullets proved to be far too costly. Instead, 
I decided to level up our trusty T-Rex by taking down a Berserker Carno, giving it the experience needed to become an unstoppable force against those pesky skeletons. I also wanted to bring along our reindeer with us, so once home, I made it saddle and began terrorizing the nearby wildlife so this thing would also become combat ready. A Trudon thought it was funny to try and nip me, I killed it. <coughs> After Mr. Maywing and myself spent hours on and searching for those skeleton T-Rexes, when finally on day 32 we spotted one. Oh my god, it's a 150. An extremely high level at that. This shall be the perfect test for Rudolph to prove his greatness. We charged at this behemoth, piercing its backside at every attempt we could. Caught only for a fraction of a second by its beam, and we got fried, nearly reaching half HP. We have to be extremely careful. I kept on attacking this thing with caution, occasionally dismounting Rudolph to spray it with my machine gun, till it finally fell before our feet. We collected the T-Rex teeth, but we still needed a lot more, so I flew to an area infested with these fire-blasting menaces. Upon throwing our Rudolph, we got jumped by the mammoth's stronger cousin, and a high level Neo Venator. Ne Neo Venator. Seeing how low our HP now was, I decided to tame something instead of going right into combat again. I knocked out a high level NASA to Sir. I have no idea how to say this, boys. Seeing the skeleton T Rex inching closer and closer near our knocked out friend left me no option but to take matters into my own hands. So I decided to teach this thing a lesson. No, 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 no! Bro! What? Oh no, oh no, 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 oh my. Yeah, I'm never fighting those things again, is what you think I'm gonna say. But I'm as determined as they get, and really wanted more skeleton T-Rex teeth. So after retrieving my loot bag, I flew around a bit more, this time using my trusty jaws to get the job done. I was on my way to kill another T-Rex, when we stumbled across a monument, high on a mountain. It looks like somewhere where the Vikings would come and pray to their gods. I really didn't want to see an angry Viking, so on our T-Rex killing spree we continued. I had no idea what I was thinking, attempting to take on two skeleton Rexes at the same time. I'm not very smart. I tried my very best to get Jaws out of there alive, but all was useless. No, bro! Ah! I'm dead. I'm so dead, bro! Come, come, come. Quick, run! Jaws! Run! Oh my god, he got stuck on the Bronto. Run! No! Not wanting Jaws' death to go to waste, I did what any normal arc player would do and began knocking out a skeleton T-Rex on foot and naked. These things take ages to tame, so I'll just go do something else whilst it gets hungry. I of course went back to our abode to repair all the flak that got torn to pieces by the T-Rex's fire beams. Once fully armored again, I was out and about minding my own business when an angry tickle chicken tried to slice me apart. So yes, I did make him my own. Using the tame helper for the Terezina, I realized that I could also use this thing on our soon to be fire blasting behemoth. Why on earth didn't I give a tame helper to my skeleton T-Rex? And after feeding it one of these starvation cocktails, it was all ours. Oh boys, I am so hyped to blast everything to bits with this thing. Returning home, I soon forged its saddle and spent most of the day roaming around the neighborhood, cooking everything in sight. Nothing, and I mean nothing, stood a chance against us, or so I thought. You see, at this point, I had forgotten that I made a Viking very, very upset a few days back. I really wish I prepared more for what's coming. Anyways, on day 34, I decided to start laying out the foundations for our new crafting area. I really didn't like our current one, it was just way too crammed. After only placing a few foundations down, I realized we are going to need a lot more stone. So yes, I farmed a lot of it, but at this point you guys have seen me farm a ton of stone, so I'll just skip to the building. I decided that it would be a lot better to first pick up our current abode, and then, with all the space we could ever need, begin placing down the rest of our floor plan. Just as your mom says, the bigger the better. So we shall be going for a 6x6 layout. Before continuing that, I decided it would be a terrific idea to finish our outer walls. So I spawned in all the resources we would need. For legal reasons, that was a joke. Ooh, look at this, boys. Oh my god. <laughs> what? I know exactly what we have to do here, boys. Our dinosaurs worked hard for days on end. Where finally, just as day 36 came to an end, the large wall was finished. 37 began by replacing a feeding trough and moving all of our hard-earned items and resources onto our new base platform. Our dinosaurs were in a mess, so I decided to spend the morning rearranging all of them in an orderly fashion, naming a few along the way. I wanted our new crafting area to look like a work of art, so I began placing wooden logs around the perimeter. This already looks cooler than anything I've ever built before. I then raised wooden pillars as high 
high as our big wall goes and covered the area with wooden ceilings. Time for the finishing touches, we put a layer of fences around the whole thing. I may have lied when I said finishing touches, as this thing is currently worthless without the necessary furniture. We placed all the good stuff, the big forge, chemistry bench, fabricator and cooking grill. I lit up our fireplace as to not get too cold and put down the last few structures that we needed. Oh how could I forget, our alpha t-rex trophy, now we're talking. Right below it, I decided to place a table and two chairs for when your mom comes over. By now we had some fertilized chicken and mewing eggs to hatch, so I placed the air conditioner down and lobbed them down right beside it. As I gazed at our progress, a sense of pride welled up within me. We had come a long way, but there was still one crucial element missing, an industrial cooker. Mr. Ankylosaurus eyed my idea warily, not quite convinced, but we couldn't delay any longer. It would take several hours of grueling, unpaid labor for our unlucky Ankylosaurus, but eventually his efforts paid off as we finally completed the construction of this high-tech cooker. Don't let its small size deceive you. This beast is capable of cooking the most intricate and exquisite recipes at incredible speeds. To use our cooker to its fullest potential, we are going to need crops and a lot of them. I do remember seeing wild vegetables growing a few days back. If we could find them, I wouldn't need to stay going through the tedious process of making a greenhouse. We spent a ton of time flying over the entire map in search for these wild crops. I couldn't find any. However, I did discover what seems to be like a watchtower, probably used by vikings to spot their enemies from miles away. I made the best use of this opportunity and put an unsuspecting parasaur to sleep. He definitely didn't see that coming. A few kilometers away from this, our maywing finally sniffed out those wild crops we've been looking for. I threw out our trusty procoptodon, which for some reason couldn't harvest any vegetables. Disappointed by our Australian friend, I decided using our large platypus, which also seemed to be useless. Frustration and anger boiled within me, pushing me to take matters into my own hands. I rolled up my sleeves and set about gathering the remaining vegetables by hand, the cool earth sticking to my skin and the scent of freshly dug soil filling my nostrils. Back home, I spent the rest of day 39 blasting dinosaurs to pieces with our skeleton T-Rex. <laughs> and ended the evening by admiring the Aurora Borealis. Aurora Borealis. I think that's how you say it. Pretty much this green light. You know, it looks dope. Day 40 felt a lot like Christmas, as we opened supply crate after supply crate after supply crate, this one gifting us a metal tree platform and a whole rocket turret. Once back home, I placed the platform and turret overlooking our abode. This would hopefully scare away the vikings from attacking our base. Oh boy, was I wrong. I tried cooking some food in our new industrial cooker, but began wondering why this thing wasn't working. I realized that it was too far from our water tap, so after moving it within range, I was able to craft focal chilies. Why focal? chilies you may ask as you need them to craft exceptional kibble which is then used to craft this red coagulated kibble only problem is we needed blood packs for them which meant one thing i had to repeatedly stab myself for blood not exactly my idea of a fun afternoon activity but after nearly passing out from blood loss i managed to craft two of these precious items now you may be asking turtle what on earth do you tame with these things your mom nah but seriously we can tame those massive neof dude why is everything so hard to say in this game bro we can <sighs> Can you speak English? Fuck you! We can now tame those massive neovenators, which tore us to pieces a few days back. The 40th day in this unforgiving world came to a close, marked by the assembly of beer barrels and the backbreaking labor of harvesting red and black berries for medical brews. Day 41 started off by crafting narcotics in peace until disaster struck. Dude, what? The Vikings had found our base and wanted revenge. Oh my god, they have a skeleton T-Rex! I panicked and with the adrenaline pumping, I whistled all of our dinosaurs into battle. Seeing my skeleton T-Rex killed in seconds, I tried running to our Cornosaurus, but it also got fried alive. Left with no option, I hopped on our Procoptodon and began shooting metal arrows at the Vikings. Our army was tearing through the mammoth, but soon got annihilated by the skeleton T-Rex. Seeing all my friends dying before me was truly heartbreaking. Blinded by anger, I kept on fighting even even though I had 0% chance of winning, soon meeting the same fate as our fellow dinosaurs. I tried spawning back on our bed, but all was helpless, instantly getting blasted to bits by a rocket. Yes, this is day 41, and we are spawning naked on the beach. And yes, I was devastated, however the urge for vengeance was through the roof, so I instantly got back on our feet, punched a log, collected some stone, soon collecting bushes and crafting a hatchet. The light of a green crate was a breath of fresh air, granting us a wooden shield and some arrows. Right after, I made a bow to use these arrows on an unlucky parasaur. 
The Parasaur skin turned into our hide armor, and upon spotting an Iguanodon, I wanted to make it ours. But the Argods had a different plan, and I ended up killing it instead. No! A couple of dialogues soon met the same fate. Our comeback is already going much better than expected. I actually wanted to successfully knock out some dinosaurs this time, so I placed a touch foundation. On top of that, a mortar and pestle was also placed, which is essential for crafting narcotics. With these in hand, I was able to successfully tranquilize a nearby parasaur. Upon awaking from his slumber, I decided to take a dip in a nearby lake, soon remembering that danger lies everywhere in this game. Oh no, bro. Our new friend proved to be a worthy opponent, surviving the whole lake attack and quickly putting the Sarko's lights out. The rest of our day was spent farming berries with our parasaur, turning the black ones into narcotics. That didn't really sound right. The day ended by trying to enslave a high level stigma lock, which didn't go to plan. I should really start trapping the dinosaurs I want to tame. After that devastating defeat, I farmed enough narco berries to craft stronger narcotics, ensuring our next tame target stands no chance at escaping. An even higher level stigma lock was the new target becoming ours in the blink of an eye. This thing was a much needed upgrade from our parasaur. It was agile, super quick, and had an abnormally sized peen. Dashing over a bridge, we stumbled upon the lands which we once called home. Now completely rid of our existence. The Vikings wiped us completely. They must really hate me. Cementing paste is something we will definitely be needing soon, so these beaver dams were exactly what the doctor ordered. Our journey continued, exploring more inland in hopes of finding a new home. Our voyage nearly came to an end when this big kitty went crazy and tried gulping us whole. After slipping away from the big cat, I spotted the gold rocks, which give tons of metal, so I decided to set up camp. I honestly love this place. We had metal, a ton of resources, and no 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 <gasps> no yes you are correct we were back on the beach after recollecting myself and taking a very long deep breath I picked up bushes, punched a tree, crafted a pickaxe, killed a dodo, parachuted into a lake, ran miles and miles on end, and died again. Oh my god, I hate this game so much, bro! Here we go again. I crafted a pickaxe, hatchet, opened a supply crate with actual good loot, killed dinosaurs, got hide, and stopped for a moment to set up a forge and a smithy to make metal tools. Hide armor was made, and I decided to eat rare flowers, making the nearby wildlife chase me up a mountain. Why did I eat rare flowers, bro? Where we harvested crystal. I used this opportunity to take flight into unknown territory, right as they 44 came along. This proved to be a great choice as after taking a quick drink from the nearby river we found ourselves at an abandoned viking village. Welcome home boys. I spent some time placing down the basic necessities rudely interrupted by a group of crazy florida men. I mean, get, you're blocking the way. No. Oh my. This new base location kept getting better and better, blessing us with the sighting of a Maywing. It was no match for my crossbow and soon was our own. I whistled it back to the village and began gathering resources for its saddle till I got jumped by a local gang. <laughs> no! <sighs> Kit recollected, revenge achieved. Now back at the village, the local gang jumped me again, damaging my structures through the wall. Ark is truly a terrible game. I managed to kill the Trudon without getting knocked out thanks to these Stimberries, but the Baryonyx got me instead. After dying a few more times... Dude, are you... What? Oh my... Dude, the game sucks balls and I hate this house, dude. Screw this house, I'm never living here again. We finally saddled up the Maywing, using it to help us farm a ton of resources. I decided to move into a larger house, which hopefully meant it had better security. The rest of our evening was spent farming berries and flying around the map, opening a couple of supply crates containing nothing of value. On the 46th sunrise, we secured our abode with a wooden door and made sure no nearby gangs could enter our village. Or at least, that's what I thought. I then died when trying to poop on a toilet. This game is so weird. Today's exploration led us to a new discovery, an Alpha Neo Venator. You thought that this thing was intimidating? <laughs> What was that noise? Yes, that was the screech of the strongest being ever spotted on this map, an Indominus Rex. I really didn't want to become his midday snack, so I bolted off soon after the sighting. Nothing much happened for the rest of the day except farming and crafting more forges. Oh yeah, and we also knocked out a tickle chicken. I wanted to once again touch long and hard carrots. We revisited the abandoned crop farm and collected all the vegetables we could ever need, including those long and hard carrots, which I love. Back home, I decided to 
to commit mass murder as I wanted hide and a lot of it. You see this fabricator engram? Yeah, I wanted to craft one. So more of the beaver's prize possession was robbed and boom, we have a fabricator again. You know what they say, boys? The comeback is always greater than the setback. Jesus Christ, that sounded cringe. Please, please cut that out. Please cut that out. The fabricator was instantly put to good work, crafting up a lot of polymer. Today was a day of taming. We knocked out a Maywing, Dodecurus, and two more oversized platypuses. On day 49, we put all the vegetables in our cooking pot, crafting a ton of focal chilies. This little pen was the perfect place to keep all of our new friends. For some reason, I always ended up going back to the redwoods. I just never learned my lesson. This time though, things were different. I successfully knocked out another Maywing and a Tylacalia that decided to attack our Maywing. Upon spotting the metal cliff platform that the Vikings never destroyed, I had a brainwave, which was to demolish the rocket turret for resources and god damn, I'm a genius. This thing made us rich. Our Redwoods experience wouldn't be complete without a big cat ruining our day. Nearly ruined our day, I mean. Because we all know that Drizzle always clutches up. Oh. Day 50 boys. To celebrate being halfway through this challenge, I decided to slaughter babies and feed them to my knocked out cat. Whilst waiting for it to eat the baby meat, I tamed more maywings. Why on earth do I need all these maywings? You see, I really wanted to craft coagulated kibble to tame the neovanator, but I needed exceptional eggs to craft the kibble, which means our backyard must be filled with maywings so they can lay as many eggs as possible. Seeing that our kitty was nearly tamed, we went back to the redwoods. Oh my... Oh my god, bro. Anyways, here we go again. Seeing that our kitty was nearly tamed, we went back to the redwoods. I really, really, really hate this game. A few maywings perished, but at least the third time was indeed the charm, successfully retrieving our loot and our new friend. Day 51 began with violence. I was in desperate need of hide, so all of our neighbors got sliced up. I then set out to farm everything we would need for wooden structures as I wanted to begin building an area for our maywing egg farm. Once enough wood, fiber and thatch was collected, I started laying down the foundation along with railings on the side of the build to make it look cool. I then elevated the potential of our build with pillars followed by a single row of thatched ceilings. This construction would allow us to place our maywings exactly like this, ensuring any eggs that they lay would easily be spotted. Since we ran out of space, I decided to use the sloped roof of a village house for our last two maywings, and we were done. I of course wanted our maywing population to keep increasing, so I mated them all up. The fertilized maywing eggs need a place to incubate. Outside another village house, I put down another wooden platform along with an air conditioning unit. I lobbed out the eggs right near the AC, soon to realize that they're still too cold to incubate. Another air conditioner was about to be manufactured till I crashed. Oh my god. Upon loading back in, a nearby tickle chicken was looking over our wall, almost like he wanted a bite out of our maywings. Anyways, back to the air conditioning crafting. I was too broke to craft one, so I decided to demolish the trophy stand we got, soon finding out that it was useless to do so. Oh well, looks like we have to farm more metal. We soon gathered all the metal on the side of the mountain and had to fly all the way up to the top now. Our ankylosaurus was overworked, but hey, at least we got a crap ton of metal. To make the smelting procedure that little bit quicker, I made more forges. On my way out to get wood for the forges, a posto sukes jumped me. Wrong decision from his end. Wood collected, forges lit. With the metal issue sorted, I was finally able to craft another AC unit, allowing us to hatch all the maywing eggs we would ever need. The later hours of our day were spent doing some minor touches on our base, like adding a feeding trough, placing stairs, and moving our generator to a better location. Day 53 began in incredible fashion. While roaming around the map, we spotted the extremely rare and dangerous Moro Raptor. We need to go back home, farm narcotics, and then we can tame it. I really missed my previous one, so taming this thing was my top priority. Oh, and to make things even more interesting, there was the previously spotted Indominus Rex right beside this thing. As I was heading back home for tranquilizer arrows, I could hear the desperate screeches of the Moro Raptor. Upon investigation, I was in shock, seeing my soon-to-be friend in a ferocious battle with the Indominus Rex. I had to do something. I began firing arrows right at the Rex to perhaps get its aggro of the Moro Raptor. Please come for me, come for me, come for me. Come for me, come for me. This worked, but was absolutely useless, since the Moro Raptor had zero IQ and kept chasing the Indominus Rex down the mountain, soon meeting its end. Rest in peace, little bro. After a jump scare, <gasps>
we found a never seen before cave. I was hoping that it could possibly lead us to an artifact, but it turns out this cave beholds nothing important. Back home, the mewing babies awaited to be claimed. Whilst feeding them berries, I realized that we had a new item in our inventory. One discovery soon led to the next, now finding out that certain items can be used to create even stronger Moro Raptors and Indominus Rexes. My urge to tame a Moro Raptor increased even more, so Mr. Maywing and myself harvested the white flower beds for hundreds of narco berries, which were then made into tranquilizer arrows. The next time I come across one of those things, I am definitely taming it. The Argod seemed to be on my team this time. That's a Moro Raptor, right? Excitement soon got to me, completely forgetting about the Moro Raptor's dismountability. My Maywing took an absolute beating, so I used this opportunity to grapple to safety. By some miraculous luck, the Maywing survived. After recollecting my bearings on a giant rock, I jumped back into action, leaving my Maywing behind. I began shooting trank arrows at the Moro Raptor, soon thinking that it was running away from me. Oh boy, was I wrong. <laughs> In order to keep up with it, I whistled my Maywing back down, soon getting completely outplayed by this thing. Oh no, we're dead. We're dead, bro. Seeing that the beast was such a high level, it made me even more motivated to harness its powers. I decided to spawn back at base, this time harvesting enough narco berries to make more tranquilizer arrows. Even though I went naked this time, everything went way smoother than expected. Or so I thought. With the Moro Raptor fast asleep, I went to collect meat to feed it, and once back, I found the Moro Raptor wide awake like nothing ever happened. It woke up? What? It had 80,000 torpor. How on earth did it wake up, dude? Yes, I was about to punch my monitor in. I was so fed up of trying to tame a Moro Raptor at this point, so instead I tamed a Bronto. Not only was this thing a much easier tame, it also had a way bigger peen. The following day, I tried my luck once again, knocking it out with ease, only for it to wake up again. I'm, I'm, dude, what? I'm literally going to. I'm literally going to kill someone. How on earth does it just wake up? I vividly remember smashing in my monitor after this one. The rest of the day, was spent using our fat Bronto to farm a lot of berries. And finally, on day 56, your boy Drizzle knocked out and successfully tamed the Moro Raptor. Yes! All of our struggles finally paid off, as we had one of the map's strongest dinosaurs, for now at least. This thing destroyed everything we faced, including those skeleton T-Rexes. We spent hours killing these calcium fire-blasting creatures, collecting their teeth was now just as easy as stealing candy from a child. And yes, I did steal candy from a child in real life. Remember that Alpha Neo Vanator we came across some days ago? I really wanted to put our new friend to the test. Can't lie, boys. I was extremely impressed with how quickly we slayed that thing. Let's go, boys. Another Moro Raptor. Upon arriving back home, it finally dawned upon me that this tiny village is nowhere close to being large enough to house all of our future dinosaurs. So the next day, I went on a lookout to find what's available on the property market, soon coming across an abandoned snow viking village. It was massive and surrounded by a secure stone wall so i bought it for five v bucks preparations to move into our new abode started right away cryoing all of our dinosaurs and transporting all of our loot and gear one trip at a time for now i just laid down a couple of foundations simply to store all of our items as the sun rose on day 58 i went exploring our new neighborhood and found your mom stuck behind a rock so i knocked her out right beside your mom was an alpha galvarex which i challenged to a duel but got scared when it started shooting its laser beams so i knocked out a Utyrannus instead whilst doing so a local gang was attacking our base what yo 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 yo! we're being attacked it appears that the neighborhood doesn't want us here after getting rid of these crazy gang members i went back down to challenge the alpha galvarex and killed him to assert dominance showing everyone that i am the new king of the hood your mom was finally tamed up so i cryoed her back home i began doing some necessary upgrades like crafting a refrigerator and placing a feeding trough when i spotted a large carnivorous never seen before dinosaur i'm really starting to doubt if moving in here was the right choice. Seeing the dangers that lied outside these walls, I decided it would be best if I simply farmed the resources I need to upgrade our castle inside of here. I spent the rest of day 58 blocking entrances in our wall, ensuring no crazy Ohio citizens will attack us again. I also placed down foundations scattered inside the castle walls so no dinos can spawn inside. Once day 59 came around, I was really craving some long and hard wood. So I knocked out and tamed a high level mammoth. This thing was an absolute beast at farming wood. Our mammoth was way too obese to fit through the castle entrance so i was left with no option
option but to use the wood we just farmed to make a ramp leading inside and outside of our castle. The ramp was complete right as day 60 came around. I placed down a behemoth gate along with walls so no unwanted guests can use our ramp. I wanted to start working on a proper living quarters with ample area for a crafting station and lots of room to store all of my loot. At first I really wanted to build on the main castle platform but soon found out you can't place structures on it. Seeing that there was no flat area to build on I decided to make it myself. We're building a lake house boys. With the pillars raised I began placing ceilings but soon ran out of stone so our dough the curious was put to hard work. The crafting continued right after. Oh, that is too perfect, boys. And before you knew it, we had the main flooring complete. Except for those holes over there. But you can just ignore them for now. With the sun rising, I began placing railings to ensure my clumsy self won't fall off. I also made it that we can hop into the watchtower right from our base. Walls were then placed around where we will have our main living area. I made sure to leave windows in a lot of our walls so we can see any oncoming viking attacks. As I have a really bad feeling that they might attack us again. A dino gate was put down and with that, the skeleton of of our abode was complete. I know this is not your conventional arc base, but I think it looks really cool. Moving our items was our evening endeavor, and as day 62 came along, we placed all of our furniture, meaning our base was finished. Most of this day was spent taming a trike and farming narco berries, which I won't stay showing you, as it's just as boring as watching paint dry. Oh, we did finally found a postosuchus egg, which I can't wait to hatch. Day 63 would be the day we used all of the narco berries we farmed to craft the most potent tranquilizer pike the universe has ever seen. Oh my god. This thing costed 15,500 times narcotics, which equates to 37,500 narco berries. So yeah, I hope it is actually as strong as I think it is. I decided to test it out on a nearby Diplodocus with 28,900 torpor. I expected that it would take at least a few hits before this thing went night night, but I was terribly wrong. It only took one hit. Yeah, you heard that right, boys. One hit to knock out this giant thing. Of course, my intentions weren't to tame it, as for all the arc nerds out there, this is a passive thing. I was simply testing the waters. The same couldn't be said about this nearby Maywing. He is now our forever slave. Same goes for this high level Carno and level 150 trike. Okay, maybe not the Carno. It might have gotten blasted to bits by a skeleton T-Rex. On our voyage back to base, I spotted a high level Teresina. You already know how this went down. After a long day of adventuring and taming, I headed back home and crafted an industrial grill as my fat belly was rumbling. I grabbed the steaks off the stove just as they were done cooking and headed out of our castle in the beginning of day 64. Our objective of today was to find at least one of the two artifact caves on this map. As I really wanted to activate the dragon summoner, a few hours of flying later, we successfully found the ancient hollows, which to my understanding should house one of the three artifacts we're looking for. In we went, soon met by a water area. Luckily for us, I brought scuba gear with me. We swam through without any trouble and lobbed out our Moro Raptor right as we exited. This proved to be the right decision as we instantly got jumped by a lot of bugs. Numerous insect murders later, we came across an artifact room. I killed the remaining bugs in here and grab the artifact of the hunter. A bit above the artifact was a small bridge holding a shining cave drop which I just couldn't wait to loot. It turned out to be the worst drop loot in arc history. Oh my god look at this. On the opposite end of the bridge was another passageway blocked by a lot of bugs. This of course wasn't going to stop me so I began grappling and parachuting all over the bloodthirsty insects. Occasionally taking a break to loot more cave drops. One having the best metal sword I've ever seen and the other one rewarding us with an insane pickaxe. I was soon stopped dead in my tracks by the this disturbing writing on the wall. The screeches of spiders soon got me running again and this time I got a bit too close to a snake which managed to strike me right in the nuts putting me to sleep. The spiders fancied the idea of a knocked out drizzle very much and soon ate me alive. Back at base I quickly re-kitted and checked on the postosuke seg we got a while back. Back to the cave we go, this time taking our maywing all the way through the water. After parking it safely on the bridge I decided to cryo up my moro raptor and take it into the tunnel passageway where I died to get revenge on all of the spiders. My loot bag was soon retrieved and our day was about to become a whole lot better with this supply drop. Oh! Venturing deeper into the cave, we came across an open ancient door, leading way to a lava strewn area. I decided it was best if I traversed this piece on myself, parkouring my way to another supply crate and to the artifact of the clever. Two artifacts down, one to go. Getting out of the cave was a pretty straightforward procedure, and yes, I did just loot the best long neck rifle you've ever seen. Now back outside, I decided it would be best if we head back to our castle to stash all of the treasures we just got. Back at the abode, I realized that we were pretty poor on metal, so I spent the rest of day 64 harvesting metal 
and testing out this new long neck. The sun rising on day 65 was a sign to finally place down beer barrels. Our overgrown platypus was used to farm berries, which we will combine with thatch inside the beer barrels to ferment a lot of beer. This will then be used to tame the really cool looking mammoth, or I'll just drink it myself. By now, the postasuchus had finally hatched. I can't wait to use this bad boy. I went out on our moro raptor slaying every skeleton T-Rex I saw for their teeth. Right besides one of these calcium demons laid a 145 though the curious, which would be a much needed upgrade from our current one, so I poked it. One tame helper later, and it was all mine. And yes, it will live a miserable life. Back home, I was really fed up of always having to go around to access our crafting station, so I built a stairway down. Very nice. On day 67, I revisited the artifact cave we explored previously to check if the loot crates respawned, because I'm a selfish loot goblin. Indeed, they did, gifting me with all kinds of goods. When coming across the writing on the wall once again, I became too curious and had to find out what will happen if I jumped in the hole. I placed sleeping bags and put all of my loot in my Moro Raptor, and in we go to discover new adventures. Oh. That was a letdown. I respawned on my sleeping bag, looted another drop, and decided to get out of here as our Moro Raptor was getting absolutely battered. Flying over our old home, I spotted a blight blue spino, which wasn't of much use to me, but I tamed it anyways as it looked better than your mom on a Saturday night. Oh yeah, we also swam in the most cleanest lake ever in Ark. Besides the lake, lay the tamed parasaur, which to be honest, I have no idea when I tamed or abandoned this guy. Oh well, looks like we're reunited. I kept roaming the map in hopes of finding the next artifact cave. What seemed to be like like a cave entrance was spotted, only to get my hopes up for absolutely nothing. The search continued for hours and hours on end, recruiting another Rudolph on the way. Whilst in the Redwoods, we also spotted an Indominus Rex. I wanted to try and tame the beast, but got scared away after only shooting a single arrow into it. <laughs> Seeing that I couldn't find any other artifact cave anywhere on land, I thought perhaps the remaining artifacts may lie under the water. I put on my water resistant underwear and bought it into the vast depths of Svartalfheim. We explored the oceans deep into the night, collecting every black pearl we came across in case we see a giant squid to tame. The only one we found was a really bad level, so I didn't even bother taming it up. With no sight of a cave entrance, our failed aquatic adventure came to an end in the morning of day 69. Day 69, boys. It's my favorite day, not only because of the number 69, but we also found a Berserk Tylacalia. Never seen that one before. I tried taming it, but it took no torpor damage whatsoever, so I killed it. I kept exploring the Redwoods, knocking out another one of Santa's evil reindeers. Whilst waiting for it to tame up, I went for a quick dip in the nearby lake, discovering an ancient ruin in the waters, and what seemed to be a cave entrance. Upon further investigation, this indeed looked like a cave, with a water passage leading down into the unknown. No way was I equipped for water cave dwelling, so I decided we would come right back to to explore this one once I got more gear from base. Seeing that this was the Redwoods, we couldn't go home without taming a large cat, so not only did I tame one, I tamed two of these feline beasts. We were voyaging back to base when we spotted a level 100 Moro Raptor. You already know I can't pass up a Moro Raptor sighting and made it my own. We didn't have enough cryopods, so I had to leave behind a Tylacalia, which got eaten alive by the Indominus Rex. Rest in peace, little bro. Now at our abode, I grabbed the necessary gear and headed back to the underwater Redwoods cave. I decided to leave my mewing behind and venture the deep waters on my own. Seeing the underwater tunnel coming to an end was a beautiful sighting. Now on my feet, I began running deeper into the cave, only to be stopped by sounds of high level insects. I arrowed down a level 250 Arthroplera and grappled inside the bug infested room. Our Moro Raptor was used to exterminate these pests, only to find nothing of value here. I cryoed up our Moro Raptor once again and headed through a tiny entrance leading to a long passageway. Grappled to the cave ceiling, I was left with no choice but to pop out our Raptor and absolutely destroyed these bugs. I looted a yellow drop, what? And it would only be a matter of time till we conquered this cave. Oh my god, bro. This is probably the slowest death I've ever had in Ark. Anyways, I spawned back at home and got all the gear we needed to get back inside the cave. My parkour skills proved to be an incredible force, retrieving our loot bag in no time. And yes, I did get knocked out again. Oh, but we lived to see another day. The rest of the cave was a walk in the park, soon arriving to the artifact room, which had to be the best looking artifact room in Ark Survival Ascended. The artifact of the massive was looted, meaning we now had all the artifacts to summon the dragons back into this world. We successfully exited from the cave on day 70 to find three baby postosuchuses which just hatched. I vividly remember picking their eggs up from a nest a few days back, I just forgot to record. No, no!
Rest in peace, bro. It's already day 70, 30 days after the last Viking attack. So at this point, I'm getting a little bit scared that there might be another one anytime soon. Because of this, I decided to build walls in any weak points I spotted. Yes, farming for and building these walls took the whole day. We finally finished patching up all the weak spots right as day 71 started. Now with all our walls built, I wanted to start organizing my dinosaurs, but Ark had other plans as I crashed. We crashed, bro. Anyways, once back in, I began walking all of our Terezinas into place and... I crashed again! I really hate this game. Luckily, once back, I didn't crash instantly, so I was able to sort out all of our dinosaurs. We moved our Utyrannus, Mammoth, and Mororaptor onto the castle and put our Trike guarding one of the entrances. I then set up our Parasaur to detect any Viking attacks coming our way and put our Tylacalias on the village roofs to pounce on any unsuspecting victims. I then had to go farm pearls for the Cornosaurus saddles and after moving them in place, along with the remaining dinos, our base was looking very nice. I think we're ready to summon in the dragons. Day 72 would be the special day, the day we bring back the dragons into this world. I hopped on my Maywing and flew to the obelisk with all three artifacts and activated the portal. Once it successfully activated, I didn't see any dragons anywhere, but we definitely did something as I noticed slight changes in the map. I don't remember that floating island being there. This thing looked like something straight out of an anime and I really wanted to discover what could be up there, perhaps a dragon of some sort. I climbed onto a nearby mountain with my Maywing, but even jumping from here was nowhere close to high enough. Once landing, however, something very weird happened. What? Oh, oh my god, that is definitely a wyvern. That is definitely a why. what the hell? And yes, we nearly got fried alive by an inferno dragon. I kept gliding over the map, soon seeing another inferno dragon cooking brontos. A few meters away, I discovered a new species of dragon known as sand dragons. These are friendly dragons and don't attack you, but at the time I didn't know this, so I approached with caution. After seeing that they meant no harm, I walked up to one, discovering that they're passive tames. I tried checking if they will eat my meat, but no, they rejected it. After a quick search online, I discovered that they required a specific food I didn't have on me, so I flew back home to craft it. Eternal Sand Draconic Essence is what they love eating. Luckily, I had everything to craft it, except the stone. So I began day 73 by whacking my Dodecurus's long and hard peak against the rocks in our castle. A few hours of farming later, we began crafting the Sand Draconic Essence, which took me forever. Stone soon ran out again, meaning Dodecurus was put to hard work again. He must really hate me. Finally though, we had 8 Sand Draconic Essences, which I'm sure would be more more than enough to tame us some sand dragons. Back out we went, soon spotting one on the beach. It only took one feeding till it was ours. This thing looks so dope. Whilst looking for more sand dragons to tame, I came across a new species of dragon known as the rejuvenating dragon. I'm saying dragon way too much. It also seemed to be friendly as it didn't bully me for my lunch money. Sand dragon spotted, sand dragon tamed. I ran out of cryopods so I decided to go back home and craft up a sand dragon saddle which I needed the draconic shrine for. I really feel uneasy with this thing in my base. Bro, this is making me scared. Bro. My heart was soon broken, finding out we couldn't ride them. Our day came to an end by naming both of our dragons and crafting a devil-like chair to sit on. Yo, we have a chair now. Our next day began with a discovery. Seeing lightning wyverns in Ark again feels nostalgic. I also spotted a bright shining rock floating right above where we summoned in the dragon portal. Coming across a high level rejuvenating dragon, I decided to grapple to it to check if it was a passive tame. Seems like it's not. I also checked what I needed for its taming food, finding out that it's pretty expensive on crop and eggs. Crops shouldn't be a problem due to the wild vegetable patches, but for the eggs we will definitely be needing a dodo egg farm, so I tamed every dodo I spotted. Midway through our dodo taming journey, I decided it would be a good idea to kill a rejuvenating dragon. It was fast, but not fast enough. <laughs> Back on the beach, I spotted two sand dragons, which of course I tamed and enslaved more prehistoric chickens till our cryopods were full and headed back home. I was chilling in base when a crazy Florida man began attacking our castle citizens. Our army soon sent the beast to the afterlife. From killing the ice wyvern, we were rewarded with an eternal ice token, which as of right now, I have no idea what it does, but we will find out very soon. I then decided that I'd put my dodos inside of the watchtower, mistakenly throwing down a little fella right to the bottom. 
Lo! I had no choice but to play Dodo basketball. Our evening led us to the depths of this map for oil, taming three sand dragons on the way back to our abode. This oil was turned into cryopods as 75 started. With all of our cryopods crafted, our day shall consist of a lot of taming. And crashing of course, because R could be nothing without its constant crashes. Whacking Dodos with a club and stuffing berries down their throats was pretty much all we did today. Oh, and I cryosicked a sand dragon inside water. Rest in peace, lil bro. No. Day 76 began by collecting eggs from all the dodos we tamed yesterday. I wanted to up our egg production, so I went out looking for an oviraptor as they increase how quickly your dinos lay eggs. We found one and made it our own. Once back at our castle, I made it a little pen and enabled wandering on it. Oh boy, we are gonna be so rich on eggs. To craft rejuvenating essence, I will also need a lot of crops, so the wild vegetable patch was revisited. Seeing an inferno dragon burning a bronto was my sign to leave. It wasn't long after that I realized of another change in the map. This time, a bright red floor floating rock. Gliding towards it, I spotted a monument with giant walls. Perhaps Vikings lived here. I approached carefully, only to find out that this was another obelisk. Day 77. I'm not gonna lie boys, I was AFK for day 77. Probably eating pizza or something, I don't really know. The following day started by trying to understand why no dodos laid eggs since we got the oviraptor. Oh how I wish I knew that oviraptor collected eggs. Frustrated with not finding eggs anywhere, I decided to take my anger out on a wyvern soon killing it. I was on a lookout for more dragons when a wild moro raptor jumped me i managed to knock it out then uh, drizzle did a drizzle no when I came back, the Moro Raptor was underneath the ground, so I left. I really hate Ark. The day ended by getting jumped by a local gang. I showed them who's boss, knocking three of their members out, and left them to tame. Day 79 was the day I would face a fire wyvern, nearly getting our Moro Raptor cooked alive. Sure, I did manage to kill it, but there is no way our Moro Raptor will be able to kill stronger dragons than this. I needed something stronger. I picked up our new Allosauruses, and when home, finally found out that the Oviraptor had been collecting the dropped eggs all of this time. Oh my god, bro. I felt as dumb as the average Fortnite player. I ended the evening by crafting Draconic Essence, which is used to tame lightning, fire, and poison wyverns. Yes, in this mod, you can tame grown wyverns by knocking them out and feeding them Draconic Essence. Our crafting was rudely interrupted by an ice wyvern as the AT came around, which I killed with Santa's evil reindeer. Today, I wanted to use all the Draconic Essence we have and tame up a lot of lightning and fire wyverns. Instead of wasting arrows, I rode my Moro Raptor and jumped in the air to pike these things to sleep. This worked much better than expected, soon knocking out a fire and lightning wyvern. Whilst waiting for them to tame, Sally must have gotten fed up of my rambling and held me down whilst a rex munched me to pieces. What is this? After the ordeal, I told Sally that if she ever did that again, I'll have no choice but to feed her to my sand dragon, so she promised to never do it again. Our fire wyvern was now tamed, and whilst waiting for the lightning wyvern to tame up, I decided to hunt down more dragons. Finally, the lightning wyvern was tamed, so I ordered it to attack some brontos. It died. No, what? Anyways, screw that wyvern because I just spotted a level 90 Indominus Rex. I managed to hop on a cliff right beside it and arrowed it down, soon putting it to sleep thanks to our insane crossbow. Once ours, I instantly began terrorizing nearby wildlife. This thing was an absolute machine, tearing everything to pieces in a matter of seconds. It also had a tail swipe ability and could even go invisible. No way. However, its feature that I love the most was the sheer size of its peen. Seeing that it's day 8, I wanted to end the day by completing something else on our objective list. This would be killing an inferno dragon. Our Indominus Rex bit through this fire blasting monster in a matter of seconds. Oh my god, we killed it already. I began flying back home on day 81, but would soon get stopped by the sighting of the strongest creature in the whole universe. A polar dragon. It was also level 180, meaning it could probably one-shot us. I wanted to put this theory to the test, and well, it nearly did one-shot my entire Maywing. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, we're dead, we're dead, we're dead, we're dead, we're dead. I really need to think how on earth I can kill something this strong, maybe with an army of Indominus Rexes? I have no idea. That's a future problem for future me. For now, I just hope the Polar Dragon doesn't find my base, as it is lurking a bit too close for comfort. When I finally arrived home, I began collecting all of the ingredients I would need to craft rejuvenation essence from our storages, which took some time, as these things take a really lot of random resources, like wood, thatch, and fiber. Anyways, I finally managed to craft two rejuvenation essences which would hopefully be enough to tame a rejuvenating dragon. I soon left our abode to test this, only to spend the whole evening searching for a bright green dragon to finally find one really high up in the air. Oh, and right below it was an Indominus Rex, meaning I really had to be careful to not end up someone's midnight snack. 
Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, I'm not sure. <laughs> this rejuvenating dragon must really not want to be tamed as it's still up in the air even after waiting a whole night and morning for it to land. I had enough so I came up with the smartest idea ever. My plan is to try glide as close to it as possible with my Maywing, jump off, parachute and grapple to it, then hit it with my 500x tranquilizer pike to put it to sleep. It worked. It worked. <laughs> I'm just too good boys, like it's actually unfair. This worked just as planned of course, as I'm Drizzle and Drizzle always clutches up. Whoever doubted me, please let me know down in the comments so I can flame you. Once its body slammed on the ground, I fed it a tame helper and one rejuvenation essence which did the trick. I returned back home on day 83 only to find that Egg Dude escaped from his cage, so I put him back in and made sure he cannot escape again. To be fair, I don't blame him at all for escaping as it's a really tiny cage and would probably qualify as animal abuse in the real world, but this is our so it's fine. Anyways, after that, I went back out to tame some more dragons, this time setting my eyes on a fire dragon. While trying to knock it out, Sally decided to prank me again, making me really close to sending her to the afterlife. Dude, what is happening bro? Once she was done pinning me down, I successfully poked the wyvern with my pike, making it go night night. I put draconic essence in its inventory, leaving it to tame up, whilst I kept exploring the area, spotting the level 180 polar dragon again. Right after that, I saw a poison wyvern, which I just couldn't help poking into. The exact same thing could be said for this really high level fire wyvern. Oh boy, we are going to have the greatest dragon army ever. A day of taming had to be ended in fashion. Yes, I am going to tame another Indominus Rex. The 500 dex Fike and Sally really make a deadly taming combo. We cryoed up our new Indominus Rex as 84 started and went jumping around the map collecting all of our tamed wyverns, knocking some more out on the way. What's the point of one rejuvenating dragon when you can have two? Exactly my thinking when I found another one flying once again high in the sky, meaning I had to use my 200 IQ play again. It ended up landing in water, meaning its oxygen was depleting. Oh my god, it's drowning, bro. But thanks to tame helpers, this dragon would live to see another day. Our taming endeavors continue with a level 20 Indominus Rex, which would be really useful for me since both of my current ones are females, meaning we could finally start breeding an army of these bloodthirsty carnivores. Back home, I began releasing all of our new friends, really giving life to our castle. I then started checking what I would need to tame better dragons, discovering I need 100 chaotic crystals to craft the food for an infernal dragon. For anyone wondering, you get a single chaotic crystal from killing a crystal wyvern. Yeah, this isn't going to be fun. Before setting out on a crystal wyvern murder spree, I decided to whistle all my sand dragons in a corner and start breeding them up. Day 85 would be the day I take it upon myself to start farming chaotic crystals. I flew out to the place I remember seeing a lot of crystal wyverns and threw out Big Sally. Since crystal wyverns aren't aggressive on sight, I had to lure them towards me by shooting them with my long neck. The whole day was spent munching through wyverns, including the morning of day 86, getting 29 chaotic crystals by the end of it. I saw another Indominus Rex, but I really didn't feel like taming it, so I killed it instead. Once back at our castle, the sand dragons had laid their eggs so I picked up each one. I wanted to build a large hatching area meaning we will need a lot of air conditioners. Seeing that crystal was needed to craft more I glided to a nearby mountain getting tons of crystal with my ascendant pickaxe. My pickaxe was so strong it literally one shot every crystal node. Back home I crafted even more air conditioners and began placing down touch foundations for our hatching area. A generator and all of our air conditioners soon followed. Now all that was left was to place down our eggs right on our hatching area and boom. Actually no not boom. The eggs are still too cold, which is really weird considering how many air conditioning units I have. I decided to craft even more, but still this didn't work, so I placed all the air conditioners right near the egg, and still it was too cold. Frustrated, I asked for help in a discord, soon finding out that I'm a big idiot, as these eggs can only incubate inside the draconic incubator. Seeing that I used all of my metal on the air conditioners, I had to go farm metal to craft the incubator. Yeah, I really just shot myself in the foot. Our metal farming expedition came to a close once 87 started, filling all of our forges with the good stuff and lighting them up. After that, the two Indominus Rexes had finished doing their thing, meaning we now had our first Indominus T-Rex egg. Oh, it's a young Moro Rex. The colors on this are sick. I then took some time to arrange our dinosaurs properly around our castle because it was looking hella disorganized. And then we began incubating another Indominus egg. And once she popped, I named her Berta because she was hella ugly. I finished off our evening by placing down two feeding troughs so our friends don't starve to death, including all the new baby Indomrexes that we are hatching. The Vikings stand no chance, or so I thought. The following day, I decided that the map's population shall decrease significantly because I really needed meat for 
for all the new babies. And I also love me some succulent meat. Once I stuffed both feeding troughs with meat, I set my eyes on crafting the draconic incubator so I can finally start raising some dragons. This took me to a nearby lake for pearls, which will all be turned into electronics, as this is the only resource we still needed. And BOOM! We can finally raise dragons. Speaking about raising dragons, I think it's about time we start breeding our rejuvenating dragons, but we still needed a male for this, so I crafted a rejuvenating essence and headed out to find one, right after I crashed of course. Dude, no way I crashed again bro! I really hate this game. I searched for hours and hours on end, only finding a female, and even though I love females, I need to tame a male this time. The Argots heard my prayers as the night crawled in, and one poke later, this green beast was all mine. I glided back home, and right as day 89 came along, I made the green flying lizards do their thing. By now, all the Indominus Rexes we hatched were fully raised, so I threw them around our castle. The Vikings definitely won't attack us now. With that out of the way, I decided to continue working our way to taming an Inferno Dragon, which meant biting Crystal Wyverns for hours and hours on end. I spent so much time killing flying lizards, it was soon day 90, and yes, I was still munching on these dragons. I was just really motivated to get an Inferno Dragon. I collected 23 Chaos Crystals by the end of it, till I eventually got fed up and left. By now, we had a ton of eggs in the Draconic Incubator, ready to be hatched. I also realized that it collects fertilized eggs off the ground for us. That's really neat. I lobbed down a sand dragon egg and, well, couldn't help but admire the little guy. I also found out that the eggs will only hatch near the incubator, so I had to move it to our hatching area. Oh my god, look at this thing run, bro. It's like a little puppy. Boing, 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 boing. I then began popping babies like there's no tomorrow. Look at our army of demons. <laughs> Soon. Even though we were becoming... <coughs> voice crack. Even though we were becoming stronger than ever, I still feared a viking attack. Something just didn't feel right, so I wanted to keep fortifying our base. I started by placing dino gateways on the cliff edge so I can close this entire part off. As you can imagine, this took a lot of farming and crafting, but by the end of the day, we had all the gateways placed. With the sun rising, I farmed hundreds of stone to craft enough gates for all the gateways we placed, and after placing everything, I was short by two gates, which triggered me a bit, I cannot lie. I also spotted some gaps between my gateways, which triggered me even more, so I took some time to arrange them. After that, I decided to check on our egg incubator, which was stuffed with eggs, so I started whistling all the newly grown babies out of our hatching area, so I can start hatching the new generation of dinosaur slaves. I even made sure to put all of my sand dragons on breeding, so we can have infinite supply of fertilized eggs, and this led me to do some really cool dinosaur parkour, which honestly looked like something out of Kung Fu Panda. Anyways, after that, I started day 92 by shooting a deer in its butt, and spent the rest of the day organizing our dinosaurs to make our base look cool. This would prove to be a massive waste of time, as the next day an ice dragon began causing chaos amongst all of our castle's citizens. Having no rifle bullets, I just sat there helpless till I froze to death. Once back on my feet, I whistled two of my green dragons back to base, but thanks to that stupid ice wyvern, all of my other dragons flew so high, I couldn't even whistle them back down, even when flying as high as possible with my maywing. Most people would have no idea what to do here, but I'm Drizzle, and Drizzle always clutches up. I went back home and crafted grapples, which would be essential for my master plan. I then grappled to a green dragon and began whistling it towards the rest of my dragons, getting me closer to them with every command, soon getting close enough to retrieve all of my dragons, till this happened. Anyways, after that, I decided to hatch all of my eggs in the egg incubator, which was obviously followed by a meat run, as we have a lot of hungry bellies to feed. On our meat run though, I spotted a high level Indominus Rex, which I couldn't pass up, and would be a great addition to our current breeding line. I used our classic method of hopping on Sally and poking the behemoth to sleep. It became ours on day 94. I cryoed it up and went back home, soon remembering how much I wanted to tame an Inferno Dragon, which left me no choice but to continue killing Crystal, Ember and Blood Wyverns for the chaotic crystals. You've seen me kill wyverns for a million times at this point, so editor, please make an epic wyvern killing montage. Okay. Enemy spotted. Nice. Oh. We finally have everything to tame an Inferno Dragon. Day 96 would be the day we find out if all of our hard work shall pay off. The Arc Gods were definitely on my side today, blessing us with the beautiful sighting of a level 175 Inferno Dragon. Excitement soon got to me, and uh, I may have walked my Maywing a bit too close. Whilst trying to get a shot on it, I also got burnt alive, meeting the same fate as my Maywing. Oh well, I spawned back home and hopped on another Maywing. This time, I used my brain and hopped on Sally, and BOOM! We now had a 175 
Infernal Dragon all knocked out. Now, all we had to do was wait and hope that one chaotic essence would be enough for it to become ours. We waited and waited. This dragon takes ages to get hungry. And finally, we had an Infernal Dragon. Oh boys, I'm hyped. I of course couldn't help myself and had to order our new friend to smoke all of the nearby wildlife. Once back at our abode, I repaired my armor and instantly went back out to kill more wyverns. This time, we were after the poison, lightning and fire wyverns as their talents are needed to craft the pure draconic essence, which for anyone wondering is then used to tame up a polar dragon. This time, however, we only needed 15 wyvern talents of each, meaning we needed to kill 45 wyverns and not 100, which in my opinion is a huge win. The dragon massacre went into day 97, where we soon discovered a new species of dragon in the redwoods. The bloodstorm dragons, which just like blood wyverns, will spit out boiling blood venom onto their victims. I tried killing them with my Indominus Rex, but they were just too strong. I'm not sure if they just have millions of HP, or if they're healing up too quickly from their blood attack, or both. They just didn't die. Seeing that my Rex was half HP, and the bloodstorm dragons were showing no signs of weakness, I decided to leave. On my way back to base, I spotted a poison wyvern. Me, being the genius that I am, thought it would be a terrific idea to try and take it down without my Indominus Rex. After coming back to recollect my kit, I made sure to get revenge and rip it apart with Big Sally. 98 also began with killing more wyverns, but I decided to actually head home this time to see how many more wyvern talents we needed. We were actually really close to having 15 talents of each, only missing 2 poison and 5 fire talents. Since I mainly needed to kill fire wyverns, I decided to go searching in the lava area, maybe more spawn over there. And oh my oh my, literally every type of wyvern spawns in abundance. If only I checked this place out earlier. Anywho, whilst we were sending wyverns to the gulag, our maywing died to a truton. Man, that's a sad way to go out. No! Our maywing died! Anyways, we now had all of the talents we needed, except one. Only problem was, my T-Rex was really low on HP, but I decided to risk it anyways, and take on another fire wyvern for the last talent. And boom! We now had everything to craft a pure draconic essence. With our maywing dead, I was left with no option but to walk all the way back home. We kept walking all the way into day 99, being away from home for so long was a bit concerning for me as I'm suspecting a viking attack coming our way at any moment. Luckily for us though, all was well once we arrived back. I crafted a pure draconic essence and instantly went back out to find ourselves a polar dragon. A lot of maywing gliding later, we finally found one. A level 180 at that. Like any other of our big tames, I decided to use a moro raptor to tank the hits while I attempt to knock it out with our pike. In the whole taming tussle, I forgot how close I parked my maywing and well, look Looks like we're walking home again. Anyways, I better focus on knocking this thing out. Yes! The hardest part about this tame was literally waiting for it to tame as we are in the redwoods which is home to the bloodhound dragon which just wouldn't leave us alone getting my moro raptor down to one fourth of its hp luckily though i am an arc veteran and managed to lead it away at last at last boys we had a polar dragon to our name oh boy was i hyped i cried this flying beast and began walking home i decided to use this flying island teleport thingy to get onto the floating island and parachute my way to our base whilst in the air i spotted a polar dragon way too close close to our precious abode, so I hopped on a T-Rex and brought along our new polar dragon and infernal dragon to exterminate it. After that, I decided to craft a full set of fur to keep warm, but something just didn't feel right. Deep down in my bones, I could almost feel the presence of evil vikings lurking around us, coming to attack our base. In order to be ready for anything, I rearranged all of my dinosaurs around the base. This long and tedious process kept going into day 100, where my worst nightmare would come to haunt me. Once my dinos were sorted and my base was looking very nice, I went lurking around the vicinity to try and spot any viking attacks before it was too late. And there it was, a whole army of Indominus Rexes and the strongest dragons one could ever tame. As they charged towards me, I raced back to the castle for reinforcements. With them hot on my tail, our army soon collided, creating a massive bloodbath. Our walls wouldn't hold for much longer, I had to hop on a rex. Oh my god! I soon found myself trapped inside the blood bot and ended up dying. I spawned back and instantly hopped back into action, getting onto another rex and defending our walls. Seeing that a viking riding a rex managed to get over the castle walls, I whistled all my dragons onto it. As more and more of the vikings indominus rexes made it over our walls, more of our army started perishing, soon leaving me alone to fight numerous rexes. There are too many boys! Whilst the vikings were blowing my base to bits, it was only a matter of time until I was completely surrounded and overwhelmed by the sheer power of the Vikings army. Oh. 
what a fight lads day 100 and we're back to our roots naked on the beach also massive shout out to the creator of this Vartalfheim map Nekatus and all the talented modders that created the dino mods I used throughout this video lastly thank you for Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video and remember boys use my link down in the description or scan my QR code and join the game I'll be waiting with that said drizzle out if you enjoyed this video, you will definitely enjoy the video on screen right now. Click it, click it, click it!